opening the hood. Hello there, everybody. Good day to you. Welcome back to the channel. Now, normally, and this goes for the new people here, this is an automotive repair kind of channel. See, I got cars and trucks and trailers and stuff out here. Uh, however, we're going to work on some heavy equipment today. Uh, this is the second video featuring this particular piece of machinery. This is a Caterpillar 289 D3 skid steer loader. It has a 74 horsepower, four cylinder turbo diesel uh, back under the bonnet. And in the last video, we did an AMS oil, oil service preventative maintenance service. Uh, on said Caterpillar engine. Uh, that included changing both of the engine air filters. There's an exterior uh, and an interior inside of that box. Uh, I'll leave a link to the first section of the PM video uh, down inside of this video's description. Now this video, this is uh, kind of be something, be something a little interesting I've never done before. Let's climb up into the cab here real quick. Uh, we're gonna take some note of some of the vehicle systems. I'm gonna go ahead and start the engine real quick like. We're going to pull up the monitor screen over here. It's welcoming us. Welcome. Welcome to the skid steer with 210.1 hours on the odometer. See that right there? That's all we needed. Catch the odometer. Powering down. Now, the astute amongst you would have noticed that this thing's kind of got like a bit of a lean going on to it. That's because I've got it up on blocks and I will show you why. We're not changing the tires, that's for sure but I do need to do some maintenance that apparently people never do on these, uh, on these track loaders. And what we're going to have to do here is set the track tension. You see how we are now elevated with the two floor jacks and the block of wood. So I have this entire track assembly hovering off the ground and we need to tighten this up because these tracks right here are very, very flippy floppy and they need to be adjusted. Hence the tape measure over yonder. Now what I've learned is that when you set this thing up, and I learned this because I was watching YouTube videos, but when you, uh, when you set these guys up, if you go to the middle bogey right here, that's the little wheels that are not actually a wheel. If you were to take your tape measure and measure between the top of the track, the bottom of the bogey, you're looking for like one inch to 1.5 inches of clearance between the two. If it is larger than the 1.5 inches, your tracks are out of spec. Now, the way that these things are tensioned is through this adjustable beam right here. This entire section, like the front wheel, so to speak, this whole section will slide and articulate in and out in order to set up this track tension. So right here, this big sprocket, this is gonna be our final drive motor. There's a planetary gear set in here. There's another one uh, on the other side, and these guys are all hydraulically driven from the hydraulic pump, which is powered by the diesel engine inside. So the way that this works is the motor drives the final drive. The final drive drives the tracks. It pulls the track around the front, uh, what do you call that, a sprocket or a pulley or a wheel? I don't know what to call that. We're gonna call it a wheel for now. It's gonna drive the track around the front wheel, past all the bogies, I know what those are called, and out here to the back wheel. And again, we see that we're sagging, so we're gonna go ahead and extend this front section out farther and I'm going to show you how to do that in this particular video so stay tuned okay so now that we know what we're doing why we're doing it I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do it and we need to do that by opening up this little access panel right here in the side of this giant metallic structure so we've got a half inch or 13 millimeter socket let's take the bolt out and behind our panel we're going to find loud noises we're gonna find this little grease fitting right here. Well, look, we've got a big old spring in there, and it appears there's like a hydraulic ram, which is, I'm assuming, grease activated. What we do is we pump grease into that fitting. It's gonna fill up the tube, and it's going to press forward on this front wheel or whatever it's called, and that is going to tighten up the track because it's gonna make the length longer, and therefore, since the track is a fixed length, it has to become more tighter. -er. And so that's the goal. So what we do first, uh, we're gonna go ahead and wipe off all that old nasty grease because I don't like to pump nasty grease into areas where there should be clean grease. So let us fetch a towel and the grease gun. We're gonna adjust those tracks. Okie dokes, grease gun 
coming in right here. It's got a tube. I'll show you guys the grease because I had to get special grease that worked on the bucket pins. Uh, most greases will work on everything, but I had to get, I got some BG Premium Lubricating Grease with RF7. This is the one on the chart where it stated it's good for buckets, uh, as well as, you know, suspension and U-joints and anything automotive. But this one includes the ability uh, to work with um, like bucket pins and heavy machinery. I do not know if the Amsoil grease was specced out for that or not. I mean, it does have a lawnmower on it, but I think this is more for like suspension, um, steering, and uh, did, did anything written on there? Yeah, trailer hitch, balls, wheel bearings, things like that. So we ended up going with the BG RF7 grease uh, for the heavy machinery. So that's what's loaded into the gun. Now, in the previous video, I had gone through already and lubricated all of the service pins and all the ramps and all rams and all of the pivot points on this. So we don't need to grease everything. We just need to grease these little guys right down here. So we'll get rid of that nasty grease. We don't want you. You don't wipe it off, there's a chance you can pump some dirt into it. And if this was a ball joint, it might be a little bit more consequential. So what we do, plug that guy in right there, and we just pump it up. Pump the daylights out of it until it starts to push out the, uh, the track. And from the two pumps that I just gave it, I saw that track move. So what I'm gonna do is move you guys over here and you're going to watch this piece come out from this piece as I do the pumping action. So here we go. Grease going in. The track is getting tighter. Oh, look at that in there. Watch the track. You can see it start to come up. See that? Change one more view. Now you can really kind of see it. You're down low. You're like under the skid steer. Might not be a safe place to be. Tightening, tightening, tightening. So now, grab the handy dandy tape measure yet again. We're gonna measure out the difference on our bogey down here. We are at uh, about, about one and a quarter inches right there. 1.25 inches. I'm gonna give it like one more pumpish or so. Maybe four or more pumps. I'd say we're good with that. That looks about right. I've got a bunch of spillage nasty that I leaked out. So let me grab that glob of nasty right there. I mean, you could leave it and be gross, but I'm just gonna wipe it out of there. And I'm still gross. Now there's grease all over me. Yeah. But don't go clicking away just yet. This is the this was the easy part. You notice I had the thing already jacked up in the air when we started. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the hard part. Tighten that guy back down. So what we need to do, we hop back into the cab, fire this thing up. We have to raise up the front forks in order to let the front side of this thing down. Then we'll go out back and operate the dual floor jacks that I had to incorporate into this project in order to lift this thing up. There's a six point, or a 3.5 ton and a three ton right here. And that's what's given us the appropriate amount of up pressure to uh, get this thing to do its lean. And the heavy equipment guys are going, it's not safe, you're gonna die. But I don't think I'm gonna die. Cause if I don't crawl under it, it can't fall and smash me. It can fall, but it can't smash me. So restocking the engine. Let's give it some, uh, some throttle here. Parking brake off. And with our right side joystick, you pull back on it, it's gonna uh, raise up the front boom, letting down the front of the tracks there, see that? That was just my wood slipping out, no worries. Okay, so now, I'm gonna make this nice and safe. There we go. So now what I need to do is move my wood from here to here, and then we'll go out back and uh, move the jack stands over. So, 
I'm going to power this down for now, I think. Actually, hang on, hang on, I changed my mind. A little higher up. Power down. I will let the rear down first. Raw. The reason that I pointed these down is because I'm crawling through here. Uh, I'm not supposed to do that, but the windshield is missing out of this machine, so normally you wouldn't be able to open it with the windscreen there. But the reason I have these down is since I'm crawling through, I'm in danger of death. For example, if one of these hydraulic lines somewhere were to blow out, the only thing holding up this whole boom assembly is hydraulic pressure. If we lose a line or a seal, it falls down, and then if I'm here, this thing is going to come through and it's going to cut me in half and that would be bad. I do not want to be cut in half by a piece of machinery. So we're not going to get cut in half by a piece of machinery. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and let those two jack stands down. So you guys come over here and hang out with the flashlight. And I will release the hydraulic pressure in the jacks. I'm doing it simultaneously because I had to pick it up using both jacks. I don't want to put all the weight on just the uh, just one. So the big jack's coming over. I'm going to bring that out all the way to the corner, giving us as much leverage as possible. This one might pick this up by itself, but I don't want to strain it. That's how you ruin jacks, is by overloading them, hence the, uh, the backup jack to go with it. <sighs> Moving on up. Okay, the back's coming off the ground. go so the rear wheel is up now we climb back into the cab move the wood over not necessarily in that order we're gonna set this down I'm thinking right here along this plane so we can push up against from this area here that will work climbing back in it's hot you guys it's so hot and i'm sweating look at it i'm leaking like my face is leaking okay restart i might just fire up the ac and sit in here for a while i don't even care if the windshield's broken out Woo! it feels good so the parking brake feature also enables and disables the hydraulics just so you know and we're not touching that stick because it'll make us drive off the jack stands or ramps or floor jacks and that would be bad uh i missed entirely hey dave sir can i borrow you can you push this wood in a little bit deeper just put it like right come this way some with it no 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 too far it's got to be on the edge um make the top wood flush with the bottom wood Scooch it back, there you go. I'll try that. There you go. Okay, so now we're on the, the passenger side uh, of this fits here. Let's go ahead and pop our panel back off. That one. I learned everything on these has you, has you removing a giant like steel panel. I guess that's uh, why they're built super tough. Give that a bit of a wipe. And let's check our clearance here. Not putting my fingers under there in case something falls down. Uh, we are at like two and three eighths of an inch track clearance on this one. So we're, uh, we're really, really loose on this side over here. So again, same thing. Just gonna shove some grease in it. And if you take a look down below, we should start to see the track coming up. Yep, see it? It's moving. Now that 
fitting up there like sleeking track coming up we're gonna do it like inch and a quarter just like the other side and uh, that's about an inch inch and three eighths a little bit more a couple more pumps Okay, I believe that will do. Let me wipe away my schmoo. There. Yeah, see, it was way easier once we knew what we were doing. But we're not done yet, no worries, because I still have two cabin air filters Click. that they say must be replaced. So, real quick. I'm gonna hop in, we're gonna fire this thing back up and set it down so it's safe. You guys keep an eyeball on the suspension. And I'll see you on the ground. Front sides on the ground. We we'll let the back side down, and that will be that. Beautiful. Okay, that's all set. Track adjustment is done. And now you know how to adjust the tracks on a Caterpillar 289 D3 skid steer compact track loader. What's the difference? Does anybody know? Comment down below. Difference between a CTL and a skid steer. I would like to know. All right, let's get into these next two boxes. So these are supposed to be cabin air filters, both for this machine. Part number 2656618 and 2656619. So they have two cabin air filters, not engine, but for the cabin. Uh, I believe one is on the interior, and I understand that the other one is over here, the driver's side. Uh, yeah, right in here, right inside of this location is where it should be located. So what we do, drop that on the ground, gravity. Yeah, we drop this on the ground, and then we can pull out this cabin filter. So I guess this is intake air into the cabin, and then the rest is, oh, there's the other filter right there. See it? So this one, oh, that's nasty. Look, it looks clean. Watch this. It's actually not clean. It's odd, it's filtering in reverse. In automotive land, this is your intake side and this is your exit side. It appears that that's not how this works. Uh, anyway, that gives us a eyeball on the blower motor. Uh, and the other cabin filter, which is right there. So that's the air going actually into said cabin, which I realized the windshield's not there. But the AC still runs. And if the AC still runs, then that means there's air being circulated uh, by the system through the interior filter. And if that guy's dirty, then we could contaminate the evaporator with, uh, with some of that dirt. And we don't want to do that. So I'm changing the filters. Plus, they're in the box because... That came with the thing and the thing got here for the thing that i'm doing you know what i mean anyway let's get into this uh this filter here i'm not sure which one is the right which one so i might end up uh opening both uh we'll figure it out okay this is the 19 part number this one is 2656619 okay so this is the correct filter for this location this one's yellow, like the paint. So we take this little guy, stick it right in there. Hook this thing in to those little slots. Close the door, smash it, lock it. Good to go, one filter change complete. 
Let's get this thing thrown away. Goodbye. And then we can move on to the other, which is inside the cap. Slide my wood. Put that right there for now. Climb back up. I need to lower down the arms here a little bit. Yeah, other filter. I think it's right over there. So since we're inside, I run the AC. There we go. Okay, now this one. It's got a radio too in here. Pretty cool, yeah. The endless fastener. Oh man, there's another one at the bottom. That's a bunch of crap right there. I can't reach that other filter. Oh, that thing's clogged. You hear the airflow? That's insane. This is a very clogged up filter. Woo, oh, get me out of here. My filter's choking me. I can't breathe. Here, let's just see how nasty this filter is. So it's looking kind of clean on the fleet side. Still going. Yeah, that's pretty clogged. We're done with that. Okay, let's get the new one. Climb back in. We'll drop it down in position. <sighs> Seat's got air ride. It's kind of cool. A little pump is inside of it to uh, pump up the air flow. Drop this guy down in the hole. Make sure it slides in to its bracket. That's good. Put the lid back on. Also good. Screw the screw back in. Also good. And that will conclude the section where we replace the cabin filters. Yeah. All right, flip her back around. We're kind of done in here. Let's go ahead and shut this thing off again. I hate the frequent starts and restarts on this but it's usually when working they work for all day not just for 10 minutes at a time so I can get away with it we're fine all right so our finalized service brings us around to the back side over here and I would like to get this fuel filter removed and replaced uh, with the new unit and that will conclude I think for the most part the, uh, the first service that should be performed on this uh, skid steer unit. However, if I were to do that right now, I have to stand out in the sun. I'm already sweating enough. So I'm gonna do another short start on this and I'm gonna pull the machine forward to get it into the shade. Uh, then, then I'll go ahead and get the thing changed out. Restarting again. much more better. Now, you can work in the shade. Okay, we swing that guy open. Fuel filters down here. It's got a little bowl on it. The fuel water separator valve. Looks like there's a lift pump on top on this manifold assembly. Power connector to the lift pump. So I guess we just unscrew it and that's that, right? Oh, here's a connector here. That runs to the bottom of this bowl right here. I'll right, tell you what, let's take this little valve loose and maybe try to drain, we'll try to drain the filter out before, there's some fuel. Yeah, let's drain this out before we attempt to uh, remove it. Maybe that little drain's not for, uh, not for water. It could just be for ease of service possible maybe I don't know not really because look the it doesn't even drain out of the machine it doesn't make any sense to me says I 
Oh well. I'm gonna drain it anyway. Unscrew, please. There. Okay, so now it's not flowing the fuel. There. Yeah, there we go. Now we're draining. Okay. I'll be back when this is kind of done-ish. Ah, I'm spilling fuel everywhere. All right, that's the opposite of what I wanted to do. Pig mat time. There. Well, the bowl is empty. See, what's getting me is there's this connector back here that I can't get to that's zip tied to the chassis that's connecting to that fuel bowl that I can't unscrew because of the wire. There. What is this? Do I have to cut off that thing? I think I have to cut it off, yeah. Yeah, I don't like this. That's beard. I'm gonna take this thing off all the way. If it comes out all the way. Okay. I can go there. Yeah, if I twist that anymore, it's gonna break this little connector. So I've gotta cut off that zip tie that's in there. That I don't know why it's there. All right, I've got some cutters for that massive zip tie in there that I don't understand. Cut that guy off. So now this thing can come out all the way. I probably could have just taken the filter out with this bowl attached, perhaps. What is that? It? Yeah, that's a water sensor. Water, something like that. Water in fuel. So that guy can go up there. Now, this filter, I believe it just kind of unscrews. Yeah, it's got a lock and an unlock. You guys sit right there. Okay, fuel filter coming down. This is easy enough. There she is. So let's sneak it on out through here. And that's our unit. So let's go fetch the uh, the new one. Where did I leave it? It's over there. Okay, 6956, 6956, that's correct. Little screw thing on the bottom and the big seal thing up at the top and a Kia Rio and a tow truck. I heard that one ingested some water because of the floods, that's nasty. All right, let's get this thing in the hole. He's unloading that. I, uh, I don't think it's gonna live, that little Kia there. Those things had blown up motors from like the factory. And I, I heard that that one got water in it. So it might be blown up just from the water, I don't know. We'll find out, we'll take a look at that later. Anyway, this thing is grooved up. Let's go ahead and get it snapped in. I think I just turned it till it locks, right? Yeah, it clicked, there we go. So, let's get the bowl back on it. Looks good. Not what I wanted to do. Okay. It's clean, we're good. So we'll screw this thing back on. Easier said than done. Oh man! Epic fail, look. See the parts problem, it's across the board. I tell you guys what, it's not just my parts supplier, it's everybody's everything ever, ever, no matter what, ever. Look, that thing's bent to crap. Look at that. No way, well, yeah, that's not gonna work. Return to sender, defective part. Um, oh, <laughs> there it is. I knew I had another one in here. I knew it. 
All right, let's do it again. What did I say? Love my job so much, I'll do it twice. Whoa. One more time. Don't bend me. Don't bend me no more. Na -na -na. That never would have happened with an Amsoil filter. I can't get that last little bit to turn. I was snipping my grip. Is that in? Not in. What's his problem? Maybe this one's just not making the snap that the other one was making. That's bothering me a lot. Okay, well that's it's on there you guys. It just didn't make the snap sound. Let's try this. Does this one screw in now? Sure does. You got the key for me there, buddy? Cool, thank, thank you. you, sir. Appreciate it. Okay. So now, I'll go ahead and plug this thing back in to this thing. Put that back up by the zip tie. Taking out the zip tie. And then the little drain tube business, that screws back in. So I'm assuming that when I key this thing on, engine off, it's gonna turn on that electric little pump business there and fill this filter. I, uh, I don't see a bleed valve anywhere, so I would assume it just circulates the fuel until all the air is removed. So let's find out. Go back around, key the thing on, and see what it does. Okay, it beeped. Let's go check the bowl. And it's fueling. Look, see that? Fuel's coming up. So I'll just let this thing run for a couple minutes. Let that little pump run, you hear it? Run in, run in. We'll let it run and then we'll give it the restart treatment and then once it's started i'm going to go ahead and load it up in the trailer and get this thing out of here it's been here too long whoa been here too long i caught you okay it's been a uh what, about three minutes maybe pretty sure we've pumped enough fuel and this pump has stopped so if the pump has stopped then perhaps it's got a pressure switch in it that uh, finishes off when everybody's primed up yeah, so i think we might be good to go here. Let's key it off. Get our key back on. Fired up. Restocking. It's a Caterpillar engine. Bring it up about 1500. 16, 17, 18. Right here past the DPF regen area. Let's go out back and take a look. Yes, this does have a diesel particulate filter. Emissions and stuff.
parts that I have over here are duplicate. Ooh, you know what? Yeah, that's that's a new air filter. That's an air filter. These are all duplicate filters. Another set for the cabin and another set for the engine. So we don't need these. Those can stay right there. I do have some gear oil. Maybe I should do a gear oil change on these final drives before we're done. I think I will. Yeah, they're supposed to take one quart of 75, 140 gear oil. You got a drain and a fill. So maybe I'll back this up, drain this out real fast, and then uh, then call it good. What do you guys say? You want to see the gear oil change? Sure. This one's almost right, so we'll inch it forward a little bit on this side. We'll start with the driver's side. That'll work. Climbing back up. To the right. That should do it. Power down. Almost perfect. Yep, so we're gonna knock that out, knock that out, drain the oil out of it into this little deal right here. Yeah, we'll do it like, it's gotta be a nice, super easy way to do this. I know. There is a nice, super easy way to do this. And this is it right here that's that's the method okay so well as what i was talking about yesterday on a ford was that you always take out your your fill hole before your drain right that way in case you uh can't get the fill plug open you don't inadvertently put yourself in a position where you can't put fluid back in whatever it is that's uh, being worked on make sense so this one here that's the drain or this is the fill. Ew, that's nasty. Look at that gear oil coming out of there. Oh, that is bad. I did not expect to find that. But I guess these uh, final drives go through some serious work. I mean, yeah, they do. They do everything involved with maneuvering the 10,500 pound piece of machinery. So yeah, that oil does a lot of work. I'm sad I don't have any uh, 75 140 AMS oil here. I just have the I just have the caterpillar stuff. Oh, it's so bad. Look at that. Now they tell me it's just one quart. Yeah, that's about one quart. Okay. Now let me get a towel. I'm gonna wipe this stuff down a little bit, clean it up, plug it back in, then fill it back up, then rinse and repeat. Okie dokes. It appears we're done draining. And I had noticed during the off time that there's no way to fill oil here. This is actually not the fill plug. I made an error. And I went back and checked the uh, service manual. A, a viewer graciously sent me a digital copy of one of these service manuals because the one that had come with the machine for the services had been saturated with water due to the uh, broken windshield. So I wasn't able to read it. So. Fortunately, I was able to read the digitized one and I found out that once you perform this procedure here, we have to move the machine to rotate the drain plug back to the top and then it becomes the fill plug, which is kind of weird, but that's what the, the book said, so that's what we're gonna do. So now I get to fire this thing up and we're gonna back it up one more time just to make sure that, uh, or to get that drain plug back at the top so we can refill this unit here so i need to get a healthy helper here so i can see what i'm trying to see actually you know what hey justin will you do us a favor yeah would, would you like to drive this for about six inches hop in real quick for me i need to back this machine up i'm gonna tell you how far to go because i have to get uh that drain plug at the top of the final drive oh. so you remember how to operate it yeah Okay, yeah, fire it up. Yep, idle down, we don't have to go fast. There you go. And then hit your parking brake switch. Okay, left stick, just go straight back on it. Go real slow, keep going, keep going. Bring it back, bring it back. Keep 
going, keep going, a little more. Bring it back. I see planetary gears in there. Bring it back, keep going. Come on back, a little more, keep going. Back, back, back. Back, back, back. Back, back. Oh, right there. Perfect. All right, go ahead and shut her down, sir. That's what we needed. So now we can fill that final drive to the top of the drain plug thing. Uh, there's the oil over yonder. Now, like I said earlier, they said it takes about a quart per side. So that's what we're going to do. A quart per side. Because that's what I have, two quarts. Let's go ahead and give it a snip. Shut that guy off. And go ahead and fill her on up. Glug, glug. Yeah, that center thing is confusing me. I saw some videos on this operation and everybody in the videos had pulled out that little plug. And I don't know why. Maybe it's there to, to drain some fluids. It could be for that. Like to let uh, air displace everything so it can drain freely. Or there's passages inside of this final drive throughout the gears and it won't drain properly unless you pop that plug out. Either way, the service manual even said to pop the plug out, so that must be the way. Yeah, that's our full court. Yeah. Hmm, still wants to take a little bit more. I don't know how full it is exactly. The last bag. Severe gear. This is definitely a severe gear. 75, 140. It's my last bag. Hmm. I think I have another quart of this stuff in the truck somewhere in another box. I hope so, because looks like we're coming up a little short on gear oil. I'm gonna save the rest of this bag for the other side. That way both sides are the same. One more for you. With dealing with uh, these plastic type bottles and not the bags, let me show you guys a cool trick to get what you paid for. What we do, get into the next one, take what's left in the old one, fill this up the rest of the way. That lets you get those last couple ounces out of there. Caterpillar guys, they're like, why are you mixing Amsoil in there? You can't do that. It's not Caterpillar spec. So anyway, let's get the nozzle back on. We'll finish filling this so up. So now, rather than cutting open a whole another tip, we just take the old tip, move that over to the new bottle, insert and then give it a squeeze i think we're we're like right there it's super full yeah i think that's that so it took just over a quart i'm good with that so we'll screw this guy back on now that we know how this is going to go the other side should be a little easier for me I had no idea what I was doing on this one, and it shows. I would never let you work on my heavy equipment, and you shouldn't, because I'm not a heavy equipment guy. But this is how we learn, too. Like, you just go do it. Just do it. There we go. Get rid of that. Nice and shiny-ish looking. So pretty. Okay. Over to the passenger side. Let's see how fortunate we are with the position of the drain not very mr justin can i get you one more time to uh operate this piece of machinery here we're gonna do one more you help me carry this guys yeah hop in and i want to get you moving this machine uh go ahead and bring it forward this time we're gonna go forward Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Pull right there. Perfect. Shut her down. 
That's what I was looking for. Stick that guy in there. It's gonna fit. Not exactly. Close enough, that'll do. Ooh, that paint's super thick. One click. Glug, glug. Okay, I got my wood set up under here. I wonder why those other ones are painted white also. Both of them were white in color. Yeah, that's gotta be a drain, which I don't get that for the life of me. Yeah, whatever. All right, also very nasty looking fluid coming out of this unit. Yeah, that's horrible. Okay, let me let this drain for a couple minutes. I'm gonna go scour my Silverado over there for another quart of fluid. And then uh, we'll come back and refill this unit as well. So Dave was just saying this, uh, this stuff stinks like cars driving through a tunnel mixed with some skunk mixed in with it. Like it's, it's horribly rancid. I didn't really tend to notice because I, I still have uh, brain damage from the biological COVID weapon that wrecked my my nostrils. So I, I can't really smell anything, um, but, uh, but Dave can. He did not suffer a uh, lack of smell. Anyway, that guy's tight. Okay, Justin, fire it up again, please. And I'm just gonna have you back up. Back up until that uh, drain is back at the top, if you would, sir. Yep. Go ahead, whenever you're ready. Go ahead. Back it up, back it up, back it up. There we go. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Back it up, back it up. All right, pull out a little bit more, a little more. A little more, a little more, a little more. A little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. Right there, that's good. Shut her down. Ah, there it is. You know, that comment that I made about COVID, that's, uh, someone refer to that as politics. That's, that's not politics, that's what happened. There's a difference. And I know this isn't a politics channel, but I still get to have an opinion, right? Because I'm a human, and people get to have opinions. Even if other people don't like said opinions, that doesn't mean that uh, they shouldn't exist. Because, I mean, come on, would we really want everybody thinking exactly the same? That's how you get things like uh, non-playable characters in a video game. Yeah, that's what I think about that. Ah, ha, ha, and that. All right, that one's in. Let's finish it off with the uh, hands all over here. Yeah, just the tip. And I did have one more... Uh, one more of these little guys. So if I need to top this off with more of that cat oil, there's one more. One more bottle of it over yander. We'll take the fine tipped tip. That was the big tip. This is the little tip. We're gonna use the little tip for the for the toppy poo. Little topperoo now. Stick that in there. Fill it on up. <laughs> See, Justin even gets it. It's funny. Funny noises are funny. That's what brings us all together. Our love for funny, stupid noises and pieces of metal. Uh, there we go. We're overflowing just like we like it. That's full. Let's get the plug back in. Wipe the petroleum off and the service should be good to go. Hey Justin, can you grab a can of brake parts cleaner? I think there's a fresh case nearby. Uh, over there to your right by the, uh, the BG stuff. I think there's a fresh case like right there. 
you need a canister. Package. That guy's good. Let's give this bulk of this stuff a good old wipe down right here. Goodbye. Goodbye. Great clean time. Shiny. Let's make the other side shiny as well. Alright guys, that will conclude the final drive oil change service on the Caterpillar 289 B3 skid steer. It's probably very similar on the like 259s and the 279s and the 299s and the, the 209s and any of the 9s that could exist in the Caterpillar compact track loader lineup. Uh, I'm not familiar with all models, but um, I imagine that this procedure is fairly universal-ish uh, across the uh, platform. So anyway guys, that will bring this uh, video to conclusion. I have nothing more to offer you other than the uh, the loading of said skid steer into the trailer. Uh, we'll do that momentarily, but before I go, uh, I would like to remind each and one of you guys to have yourselves a fantastic day. Thank you one more time for watching this video, and I will see you guys on the next one. End of transmission. that again <laughs> okay so i just went and changed my pants um the jack stand broke thing folded in half like a flipping accordion what do we have here two these are two ton stands so we had two of them they're both bent so they did not hold up to yeah yeah that one collapsed too that's insane I did not think these were going to do that. Where'd these come from? These Harbor Freight jack stands? No, uh, probably not. We never would have made it that far. Uh, okay. Done with that. Let's see, we broke the driveway. There was some asphalt here. That got broke. Um, yeah. So now, I think next time I do this, I'm just going to stack wood and drive on the wood and not the jack stands because that was pure murder. Unbelievable, I didn't expect that to happen. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and chain this thing up and call it good, and then I'm gonna go change my pants again, because that was not how that's supposed to go.